today I wanted to make a informative video on how to properly take apart one of these Motronic ECUs for a BMW E34 style chassis. This should apply to models such as M5, 535i, uh, to an extent 540, 530, and 525i. What this one is, as you see here, there's WBS. This is from an M5. So the tools I have for this job are the following. I have a pair of small needle nose pliers. I have a small screwdriver and everyone should have a pair of these, a pair of zip ties. So now that we have everything, let's go ahead and flip this over and we'll see that we have 10 release tabs on the back. Now there is some marks underneath. So that tells me someone else has been in here before. This came off of a car with 120,000 miles. So anything could have happened in between. So once you have your um, needle nose pliers in hand, you're gonna wanna take them and see if you can get under one of these tabs to pull it up. Um, it might not be so easy, but once you get under there, you can grab sort of the whole thing. Sort of pry it over but it's easier said than done um but there we go that one's starting to release so i'll take it just bend it up straight don't bend it up any further than that um or else you'll uh stress the metal too much and it could break off so i'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of these So now with that process complete, we will take the ECU, flip it back over on this side, and pull the cover off. Now if there's any resistance, that's fairly normal. The pins or uh, tabs on the back are never usually straight enough. Um, so with that being said, sometimes you need to flip it over and just sort of monitor what's going on here um, and maybe try lifting it from this way. Now when I look at this I just see that some of these might be a little bit too tight so I'll take them and sort of manipulate them to my advantage here. So close. So sometimes if you press these through, that's just enough. Flip this back over right now. Should just lift off. There we go. So there's the case. Put that somewhere safe. Now we have the opened up DME. So one thing you'll notice about these ones is they are sort of like a sandwich plate. So there's a bit of a procedure to get into these. If you have a, you know, what's called a red label uh, DME, like one that belongs to a um, M50 powered car, that's gonna be a lot simpler. It's the same steps that we've been through at this point, but the chip is accessible and there's nothing else you need to do. If you need to swap a chip, you can just put the cover back on easy peasy right but on these ones it's a little more involved now what we want to do is take this top board here and we're going to want to open it like a book there's a ribbon connector here so we know it does that there's a couple of steps number one is getting these sorts of tabs here released and those are as simple as just applying a little bit of pressure on that side of the board and making sure you have a good grip on everything while you do that be really gentle doing that that one didn't fight me as much now that we have those released we're going to go back to the front and we're going to notice a few things 
there's a couple tabs here in the upper right and upper left corner. They're very hard to make out, um, but there's a tab there and there. Those are the ones I'm talking about. So those are the two release tabs for the this top row of pins, which is this top board. What we need to do is get these tabs released. So the method I like to do is I like to take the zip ties and I like to take the smooth part and wedge that in there. Now, some of these ECUs, this is gonna be kind of stiff. There's gonna be some resistance. If that's the case, just take your uh, pry tool and very gently uh, pull back the plastic tab and insert whatever it is you have to wedge that uh, release open. So I will do the same on this side. This side's a little bit more stiff, so I'm going to take my pliers here and sort of help it in and don't worry about hitting anything on the back side there's nothing there to damage so once that's through should be able to take the DME put it away from you and then let me just point another thing out real quick there's a little bit of a diagram here that is supposed to represent how you remove this. So that's like an accordion, right? Um, and this is our DME. We're trying to take this end now and pull this up while this stays, this side stays um, in the same position. And what that'll do is release the board from the main harness uh, connector. Okay, so we've seen the diorama, we've got our zip ties we're gonna go ahead leverage here and make sort of a half triangle with our fingers on the PCB start to lift it up as far as you can until you see the bottom board start to stretch you don't want to really see that so much it's once we get it to a point it'll stay and then we can pull back front let me just lift it up just a little bit more and we can pull back here. And we'll see our connectors come free. Keep holding back until you're free of the uh, harness connector, and then that's it. Now, DME is opened up. So we can see everything. You can pull your zip ties out now. It's like a book. All right, well, I'm gonna now show how to get the chip out. Um, and we'll just get right into that. Grab this crazy thing. Um, <laughs> try and show this the best I can. So this is the chip and we have this plastic sort of retainer. Uh, these can come in this off-white color or some are black. In my case, it's off-white, so there's two slots here. Um, I tend to pull one side up, get it off, and then grab another thing, and if I can wedge under it, just to stop it from going back into place, I'll do that, and then pull from the other side, and then it should release like that. And then now we have the chip. I'm gonna do this now. Um, keep that from sliding away. Okay, so getting the chip off is um, always a scary thing for me, but if you're patient, it doesn't have to be that scary, and if you use the right tools. So I have some of these types of uh, trim tools from Harbor Freight. The challenge with this is uh, making sure that you put equal 
pressure so that one side doesn't release because if that happens, the pins will bend in the socket. Now the pins are really like in there. I have bent pins in the past. So the way to go about avoiding that is to just kind of work from each one of these sides to sort of lift it up and up and then eventually it should come out. You don't want to put so much pressure on it that it'll just pop off because that's how you bend pins. I'm going to use this bit um, to try and lift on one side and then I'm going to work out the other. So I'm going to do this in real time so you can see um, you know, how much attention and care is needed for this process. So here we go. So I already just saw it lift a little bit, which is fortunate because they're usually really stuck. And um, super scary process normally, but this actually looks like it's going pretty well. There's just enough of a lip here so that you could get something onto there. Oh, and then this side, this side, just a little bit more. It's almost out. And that was it, just released. So there we go. Chip is out, it's safe. None of the pins are bent. Right, oh, um, big, big point right here, and I should have pointed this out before I did this. There is a notch here on the end, which you can make out. That will indicate the direction that the chip needs to be installed. So just make sure that your chip is lined up with that. Otherwise you'll have to do all this over again. Just make sure that you're on top of that. Um, so now I'm gonna just put this back and then I'm gonna visually just make sure that all the pins are sitting in the sockets. It's a little uneven. On one side, they're kind of not eh, wanting to go in. So down, not lining up. So um, it's kind of weird. I wonder if that's just from uninstalling it. See if I put it on a flat surface and just kind of work it back and forth, maybe it'll help me out. It looks like one side's bowed out more than the other, so I'll just try and work on bending those back a bit. Okay, um, off camera, I went against a harder surface and I think they're aligned better now, so just see. Yeah, yeah, uh, almost. Okay, all right, so that was required. A little annoying, but it's just the nature of these things, right? So it's in there, but it's not seated. Now I'm gonna just do what I did before, but in reverse, which I'm gonna work from this end to this end, back and forth like a teeter-totter. Go ahead and do that slowly and monitor what's going on so I don't bend anything, because that would really be unfortunate. Once I feel that that's seated enough, I'm gonna take the retainer and go ahead and try and pop it back over. Now, you'll hear a nice click and that's how you know it's installed. Um, if it doesn't go on easily, then you just need to press the pin in more and check that everything's aligned. And then from there, uh, we can start to put the DME back together. And that's just gonna be the reverse order of everything else I demonstrated. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Now these will get kind of dinged up over time just from force, which, you know, it's good to minimize that if possible. But I've seen that uh, if, if they all are broken, that one of the best temporary, I don't know, fixes for that is to sort of like tap a screw into one of these slots and it should be enough to hold it. Hopefully you don't have to do that, but yeah, I just I just hope that this video helps someone because um, these are sensitive. This thing's about 30 years old. I want to demonstrate that and show kind of my way of taking these apart. It may be different than other people, but it works. I've never really bricked one of these because I, I like to believe I take special care.
I just wanted to say thank you for watching my first video on my official YouTube channel. I know this was a long and drawn out video. I'm sort of testing the waters with this content and just want to see what sticks. I want to make more videos like this and I believe it's worth taking a good bit of time to be thorough. So it's helpful for those of you who might be um, stuck in the middle of the project and don't want to dig through some ancient foreign posts or information like that that should be really accessible and uh, you know high quality. So I was thinking of making a sort of series of videos like this where I could highlight how to work with tearing down a part, maybe showing that process um, and go in depth. So for example, the DME I just had up on the screen right now is one of the next parts I'd like to cover in future content. It's a DME in a knock sensor box that would be found in an early to mid 80s era BMW 745i. Uh, that's a car with a factory turbocharged M30 um, six cylinder. So pretty cool and unique stuff. And I noticed there's not a lot of easily accessible information on those cars in particular. Um, it's mostly buried on the internet and crazy old forum posts. So I just happen to have these parts and I figure why not make some videos about them. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that or if you want to see other parts um, you'd like to see dissected uh, like the DME in this video. Let me know in the comments about that. And so the next video I'm currently working on is a sort of review and DIY guide for an aftermarket cup holder slash charger device with my 1997 BMW 750i off. I just finished all the filming for that, so now it's gonna be my next focus and project in post-production, um, so look forward to that. Apart from those two video topics, I also wanna focus on content revolving around the E34 chassis. Uh, mainly because I own two of them. I have a 1991 Dynan M5 that I purchased last year. That car's gonna have a lot of content, a lot of focus around it as it needs an entire, you know, kind of rebuild. Um, and as well as my 1994 525i slick top wagon, which also is a massive project car. And I'm sort of in the middle of a rebuild on that one as well. Um, so yeah, that one's going to be my main focus of content, and I have many, many plans, so definitely stay tuned for that. Anyways, it's now a good time to end this video, and again, thanks for making it to the end. I am super excited to explore something new, and I look forward to seeing where this content goes, as well as getting uh, better at this stuff, because it's pretty time-consuming at the moment. Um, so with all that being said, Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around the next time.